Good day, folks. Today we are going to talk about ND filters for the DJI Mavic Air. We're going to talk about when and why you would want to use them. So these are ND filters for the Mavic Air and they're by Freewell Gear. If any of you are regular to my channel and watch all my videos, you know that I'm a fan of Freewell Gear. They make excellent products and their ND filters are no different. Now they sell ND filters for many drones including the Mavic Air, the DJI Spark, the Phantom Series, the Mavic Pro, and even the GoPro Karma drone or your GoPro. Their ND filters are high precision glass. They are multi-coated and double-sided so you know that they're going to be a good quality and give you a nice crisp image. Now the question is why do you need ND filters and should you use them? I usually tell people when they ask me, I get a lot of emails and uh, different questions on my uh, Facebook page and from my website. Now I usually recommend to people if you're buying your very first drone, maybe you picked up the Mavic Air or the DJI Spark, I wouldn't worry about ND filters to start. Just learn to fly your drone, capture footage, the movements, and different things like that. Now when it comes to capturing nice, beautiful cinematic footage, uh, there's three kind of aspects to it that I believe that help get that uh, look that you're after. Uh, first is frame rate and uh, the other part is your movements and the way you fly nice slow movements no jagged uh, up and down and turning you know nice flowing shots uh, the other is ND filters now if you're brand new to drones you might be wondering what an ND filters for or maybe you've watched other videos on YouTube and are still just looking for more clarification the easiest way to explain an ND filter is that it adds a little bit of motion blur in between the frames that uh, the drone captures. Uh, basically, it just allows you to set the proper exposure via the shutter speed. And just an example of that is if you put your Mavic Air up on a bright sunny day and you have it in auto, you know, whether you're filming at 4K or at 1080, the shutter speed on the drone is going to be quite high because of the bright day. It's, it's adjusting the shutter speed to uh, make the image properly exposed and it'll be really high it could be at like 1 800th of a second um, 1 1000th of a second you know uh, 1 400th of a second which is all pretty high to get that cinematic look the rule is it's called the 180 degree rule and basically you want your shutter speed to be double that of your frame rate no higher no lower so basically what that means is if you're filming at 4k at 30 frames per second you want your shutter speed to be at 1 60th of a second so double what the frame rate is if you're filming at 60 frames per second you would want your shutter speed to be 1 1 20th of a second now this is where the problem lies and this is where ND filters come in so you go in you're gonna get some nice cinematic shots you set your uh, drone to shoot at 4k at 30 frames per second you switch over to manual mode and you set your shutter speed at 1 60th double the rate you'll notice that your image is going to be blown out it's going to be super white especially on a bright day you can't film like that because there's no way to fix that you know if it was a little overexposed you could in post you could adjust things but that's where an nd filter comes in basically it allows you to get that lower shutter speed on bright days and that's where you would choose an nd4 an ND8, ND16 or higher, they do actually sell them even higher up to 64. So I actually have a little example here I'm going to show you to help explain it and uh, show you the difference. Um, I just set the drone on a table and was filming some water and uh, you'll notice that the ripples in the water when filmed in manual mode are very pronounced. When I put an ND filter on and set the shutter rate correctly, you'll notice that it's much more smoother and much more pleasant to watch. Um, without it, it's just very kind of jagged and stark. When I was in automatic mode, it actually set the shutter speed on its own to 1 300th of a second, so that's way too high. So because I was 1 300th of a second, um, I opted to go with an ND4 to get the correct uh, shutter speed. If it was even brighter of a day, you know, I could have gone maybe to the ND8. And uh, that comes with time and practice. Um, you know, sometimes you got to test a bit, put a filter on, see if you can get the right exposure. And uh, there's also different apps and calculators you can use to help uh, figure out what ND filter you should use. But let me show you the example here. So here is the water without an ND filter. And it looks fine. There's nothing really wrong with it. Um, it does have very pronounced uh, ripples and the water coming down is very pronounced. Now in this clip here I'm showing you, this is when I set the correct shutter speed. I set it to 1 60th of a second because I was shooting at 30 frames per second. And you can see it's way overexposed, it's way too bright, and there's no way to fix that in post. So, you know, obviously we need to put an ND filter on. 
Now for this last clip, now I have an ND4 on there and I was able to set my shutter speed to 1 60th and uh, it gives us that nice amount of motion blur. You can see that the water is not so uh, pronounced. It just is more flowing and uh, just looks nicer to look at. And here is a side-by-side. -side. I've done a screen capture on both videos and you can see the difference at just how crisp it is without the ND filter. Now with all that said, there are times where you don't want an ND filter because you want your frames to be nice and crisp. If you're a person that likes to film action and you want to pull a still out of the 4K video and turn it to a photo, which a lot of people do, then you don't want to use an ND filter because you want that image to be as crisp as possible. But if you're trying to get nice smooth footage, nice cinematic, flowing, pleasant to watch, then definitely you want a set of ND filters. So I'm just going to show you here on the Mavic Air how they go on. By default, there's a little uh, lens cap. It's not even a lens in there. It's just like a little uh, ring that's on the camera. Basically, it protects the lens. It kind of uh, gives it a bit of a lip. So if you hit something, it's not going to damage the lens. So that you're going to want to unscrew first. And it can be tricky to get off with the Mavic Air. It's on there pretty tight the first time. Once you've got it off once, it comes off easy every time. Um, there's some tricks on the internet if you cannot get it off. Um, putting an elastic band around it, um, different things like that. But mine came off the first time with not too much issue. You do have to put a fair amount of pressure. And just hold down the gimbal with your thumb there. You don't want to damage it. So you're just going to unscrew it. Just like so. Now the nice thing with uh, these uh, filters is that they're pretty close in weight, if not almost identical to the ring that comes off. So it doesn't affect the gimbal at all. So now to apply the ND filter, it's just gonna screw on where that little uh, ring came off. Don't over tighten it because you don't want it too tricky to come off. In this kit, they come with ND filters that are just straight ND filters, but they also come with a set that is polarized and uh, polarizing basically can help get rid of reflections in water um, it can make your sky a nicer deeper color and uh, yeah it can generally give you some really nice footage when it's polarized and you set the polarization by turning if I can show you here this little dial at the top turns to set the proper polarization now there's no way to set the polarization properly until it's attached to the drone and you can see the feed on your phone or your tablet whatever you're using uh, you can then adjust the dial and uh, until you get the way you like it now the problem with polarization ones is that you have to use them at 90 degrees to the sun so you can't put one of these on and then just fly in every direction and get proper polarization um, so they are a little more work to use but they can produce some really stunning results so if you just want to get up quickly, get some shots, um, stick with just the ND filters. Um, if you want to line up some shots, plan it against the sun, and you just want them to be just brilliant, uh, get the ones with the uh, polarizer or get the kit that has them all. Now, another thing I want to point out with uh, ND filters, ND filters are great when you have motion in your shot. For example, you're skimming along a tree line, that will give you that nice blur. Um, if you're filming anything with motion, uh, cars, bicycles, uh, you're doing some uh, follow me stuff, uh, animals, whatever, anytime there's motion in your shot, you want to use an ND filter to get that nice blur. If you're up really high up in the air and you're doing some really slow shots, there's not a lot of motion on the ground. You really don't need to use an ND filter. You're not going to have any difference in the footage. It's not going to look any more cinematic because because of the slow motion and the you know very little movement so keep that in mind well folks that's basically it for my video if you have any questions about ND filters and frame rate don't hesitate to uh, make a comment down below and uh, we can continue the conversation further thanks a lot for watching give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one <laughs>